We're here with Andrea Mistretta, the author and illustrator of Mardi Gras Parade of Posters. Hey, Andrea, how are you? I'm fine. How are you? Good. Um, you've got your beautiful book there with you, Thank you, which we are so excited about, brand new this season, celebrating 25 years of your wonderful posters. Yes. Can you tell me a little bit about how the posters got started? Well, first I'll have to tell you that I couldn't imagine celebrating a 25th anniversary anyway than having this book with Pelican Publishers. And uh, yes, it was uh, 25 years ago when I did my first Mardi Gras poster. But before I even started that, I longed to be in New Orleans. I'd had dreams about it. I loved the music all through my teen years. I loved the music of New Orleans, the, the stories I'd heard about New Orleans and Mardi Gras. So Mardi Gras was just, I think, the, the best platform for an artist and the best subject matter to really explore the furthest reaches of my imagination or anyone's imagination. So I'd done a painting, and lo and behold, in time it made its way down here in the form of a Polaroid photograph. A friend brought it down here, went to the French Quarter, and showed Margarita Bergen, a proprietress of the Bergen Galleries, and she said, that looks like a good poster. She foresaw it would be a poster. And, uh, you know, that's how it all got started. We never knew that it was going to be as successful as it was. But every year, it just seemed to gain more popularity and a following. So 25 years later, this is the compilation of all that love and energy and creativity for the first time. I have never seen all of the posters together in one place. So anyway, Pelican has done a wonderful job with the production of all the colors. I did design the book, which is unusual. I designed it from cover to cover, as well as author it. You can see from the Even lining. the end papers are gorgeous. Yeah, these, these were end, well, these end papers were actually derived from the designs that I did for fabric. Oh, wow. So I thought, well, what I'll do is I'll use it for my end papers. And then you can see here is where I sign. This one's not signed yet, <laughs> but it will be signed. And it just goes on with some beautiful jewel-like colors, which has been uh, placed on a black background. A little bit about the history, little vignettes on how it got started. And then you go into the, the anthology of this poster series. There's 25. What you'll find also is in each of the posters, there's a previous year's poster hidden somewhere oh. and that's for the viewer to find out that's Very the game nice. i play but it's this is last year's tiny in one of the beads the process which is painstaking it's not a computer generated photoshop i do photoshop only in the lettering but the actual piece itself or in this step-by-step -step process are hand painted hand stenciling airbrushing hand painting with acrylics so these are, in fact, paintings. I did a trinity of black and whites that were subtly hand tinted. And these are the black and whites. And I think those have been getting some of the most comments, actually, are the yes. black and whites. I'm, I think I better go back to doing black and white <laughs> you know, to satisfy the people that have a taste for the black and white, too. But as far as color goes, I use some extreme color. Perfect for Mardi Gras. Perfect for Mardi Gras, absolutely. For me, for my own self-indulgence. I like to use full spectrum color. It makes me feel good. You know, you need that in the winter. Now, the biggest one of all was Heineken. They really did a big, big promotion, you know, all around the United States. And actually, it was this particular campaign that helped initiate other regions in the U.S. to Mardi Gras, to experiencing it because they did a lot of promotion. Uh, a lot of times products, consumer products, use subject matter, like, for example, the Mexican beer, uh, Dos Equis. A lot of people didn't know what Cinco de Mayo was only 15 years ago. And uh, because of the beer, the consumer product, using it as a, a vehicle you know, to promote the product, Cinco de Mayo became popular, and that's what happened with Mardi Gras. It was like the perfect party subject to sure. bring the, you know, the uh, product out to all corners of go. the U.S. 
It's a beautiful book. And oh, do you have a, a favorite? I'm sure that's like trying to pick your favorite child, picking a oh. favorite poster. The cur- Whatever the current is one is. the favorite yeah. one. Because sure. I'll look back and I'm like, okay, I'm tired of that. Now I'm looking at the current one. So actually, I'm really thinking of next, next year. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So you've come down to New Orleans to celebrate Mardi Gras, to mm-hmm. promote the new book, right in the midst of all of this Saints hoopla and Mardi Gras and everything. I couldn't be here at a better time, even though uh, I have to say the Saints are taking precedence. <laughs> I don't mind because I couldn't be happier. It seems because of that, so many people, and I've been talking to people back north, they want to be here so bad. They wish they were here. And I think that next year... The same thing is going to happen. People are going to remember New Orleans was the place to put on a big smile and have a party, you know. I always loved New Orleans. As a matter of fact, if you look at the 2006 image, I talk about the uh, how sad I felt during the time of Katrina and how I couldn't find my my second family, my publisher, my friends in New Orleans. And uh, I was in the middle of doing the painting for the following year, and I stopped in my tracks. I was like, I I can't do this. But when I went to Madison Square Garden in Manhattan, in New York, and there was a fundraiser called Big Apple to Big Easy, Mm -hmm. and as soon as I walked into Madison Square Garden, there was a a Cajun band playing, walked in further. You know, I, I was getting chills just listening to the music. Then I saw my posters. Someone had taken my posters and enlarged them to help with the decor and make it so I had the sight and the sound and I said oh my god I I felt like I meant something if they someone blew these pictures up and put them up and I have photographs of that so I said I don't care if I published the poster if they published the poster or not I'm going to go back to my studio and I'm going to paint a whole new one and that's where the uh, spirit of New Orleans Phoenix Rising was painted. When I was in New York at the Big Apple to Big Easy, what they were supporting was New Orleans Area Habitat for Humanity. In December of that year, in uh, 05, I had heard news that Harry Connick and Branford Marsalis were going to, where they were spearheading the project, Musicians Village. And I said, that's going to be my, I'm going to devote my, half of my royalties, uh, whatever income I get from that is going to go to Musicians Village. So I have been told by them that I'm their longest continuing partner uh, as an individual, you know, because I continue to contribute. And also I'm proud to say that I'm honored to also contribute 5% of the royalties that I'll receive from this book to New Orleans Area Habitat for Humanity. Well, the yeah. book is a wonderful celebration of the spirit of the city, and, and giving something back to the city, too, is, is really special. How can I not? It's, it means so much to me. I'm going to eventually wind up down here anyway. <laughs> you know, so I come here often. Well, thank you so much for taking a few minutes to talk with us, oh, Andrew. You're We're very thank excited you. about the book. I am. And very um, hope you enjoy the rest of the Mardi Gras season. I will. Thank you so much. Happy Mardi Gras. Happy Mardi Gras.